Hi everyone, welcome back to my lab and today's video, which is going to be another brush review video. I feel like I'm doing these and eyeshadow palette reviews most frequently on my channel now, but I love both, so nothing wrong with that. In today's video, I'm going to be featuring Scott Barnes brushes. There's 10 brushes in his line currently. I did purchase all 10 in a set. I'd become more and more curious about these brushes, having seen them featured on Tati's channel very, very frequently. And when I saw him apply her makeup on one of her more recent videos, which I will link down below in case you're interested in checking it out I became even more curious about the line and I finally treated myself it was a good time anyway because I had a birthday recently and why not get myself a really nice present typical to my other brush reviews I'm going to insert close-ups as well as snippets of me using the brushes so that you can see how they perform and I'll give you some comparisons to brushes that are similar to them in my current collection so if you're ready let's go ahead and get started I purchased my brushes from the Scott Barnes website as the complete pro series set. I paid $243 for the set. There was a savings for using the set, although Tati's code, I forget what the code was, but I'll put it in the description box down below if you want to check that out. Her code worked only for individual brushes, not for the set, because the set was already discounted, and I did do the math, and purchasing the set was still more cost effective than doing the individual brushes and then her discount code. So my purchasing experience was a positive one. His website does accept PayPal, as is my preferred means of of paying for a product that I order from websites for the first time. It's just a little more secure, makes me feel a little more confident in purchasing from a new brand. So that went off fine. The processing time was a little bit longer than I expected, but once the product shipped, it arrived to me in a couple of days and I did get the free shipping. The parcel arrived to me in a gold bubble mailer and inside all of the brushes were tied together in cellophane inside Scott Barnes tissue paper. It looked kind of like a flower arrangement. All brushes were very safely packaged in those cellophane sleeves and each one of them, depending on the nature of the brush, they had an additional support whether it was a plastic sleeve or a tube to protect the different bristles and the different shapes. When I first examined the brushes, I did notice that these are manufactured in China. I did also notice that when I removed the cellophane, some of the bristles had uh, acquired static electricity and so they were splaying out a little bit and you might see that in the close-up shots of the brushes. I'm not going to go in any specific order, so I'll insert snippets at various stages of makeup application so that you can see how the brushes perform. And the first one I want to mention is the number 67, and this one is described as the good face brush. The retail price of this brush, if purchased separately, is $50. All of his brushes are synthetic and cruelty free, but they have been designed to mimic different animal hair. This one specifically was designed to mimic goat hair and is intended for all over face application. I use this brush in a variety of ways today to see how I might best prefer it and I used it to apply setting powder all over my face, just a light dusting of setting powder all over my face. I also used it to blend out bronzer along my hairline and in the tops of my cheeks and lastly I used it for buffing my Guerlain Meteorites uh, as a final buff. The brush is really soft. I have to say that it does pick up product really, really well, and I did find that it blends out product quite nicely, and it doesn't disturb any foundation or anything underneath. The fibers are very, very soft, and as far as the shape, this shape is not that unique in my collection. I did find another brush that is very similar to it, and that is the Marc Jacobs uh, 12 the bronze brush here you can see the brushes side by side and you can see that they are very similar in shape they are also very similar in terms of density the biggest difference that I noted was in the shape of the handles as you can see on the bottom the Scott Barnes brush is longer and it tapers at the end the Marc Jacobs brush is branded as a bronzer brush and I do find that it works well for that purpose as does this one they are equally soft equally dense and I do like both brushes this one retails for $50 this one although this is a limited edition packaging it retails for 78 I believe so this is definitely a more affordable option next we have the number 68 foundation brush and this is very reminiscent of a duo fiber brush it has both straight and wavy fibers for application of foundation whether it be powder cream or liquid it retails for $42 and I use this brush to blend out my foundation I was using my bare minerals complexion stick again I'm really 
really loving that foundation. I sort of wanted to see how the brush would perform with a stick foundation. Those have a tendency to be a little bit more difficult to blend out and it worked. But Bare Minerals foundation does have a lot of slip to it and this brush is really really soft. I was really happy with how it blended out the foundation. Like a lot of dual fiber brushes, it doesn't soak up the product so I can really get the most out of the foundation that I have and I am able to layer with this specific brush. It's very soft. I also used it to set under eye concealer. There's no concealer brush in the collection so I just wanted to see how it would do and it was fine although obviously it would be difficult to get really really close to the eye since the brush is really big but it does blend out cream products really really nicely. I do have a few brushes that are similar to it. I have one from Makeup Forever. This is the number 122 brush and I also have this one from MAC which is the 187 brush. Right. Excuse the Scott Barnes one as it is dirty since I used it in my makeup application today but you can see that they are all very similar density, very similar in terms of the length of each of the fibers, both the longer one and the shorter one. I like this brush as well. I think that it would be really really great to blend out emollient face products whether they be blushes, bronzers, or foundation which is its intended purpose. Now we have the Flawless Face number 65 and in my opinion this is one of the more unique brushes in his collection. Collection. It's a fan shape which I've gotten more familiar with fan shapes now that I own more of the Sonia G brushes But this one is a very dense fan brush. It's also quite short So it's not as long as some of the Sonia G ones and it's a little bit wide at the top I searched my collection for something like this and I was not able to find anything like that Here it is next to the Wayne Goss 24 S brush and as you can see this brush is more narrow and It's also a lot more dense here it is next to Sonia G Sculpt 4. You can see it is a lot bigger. And here it is next to Sonia G Sculpt 1. You can see that in terms of width, they're very similar. But again, the Scott Barnes brush is much smaller. I really enjoyed using this brush today. I used it to blend out my contour. I did use a cream contour. I was using the Fenty Beauty Matchstick. And the way I applied it was I applied the matchstick to the back of my hand and I picked it up with the brush and I just patted it into my chest cheekbones and the brush did the blending for me. I think that if I were to mimic that same process with the Wayne Goss brush, I would get a lot more harsh line which then I could blend out with it. The most similar application could be used with the Sonia G Sculpt 4 brush but it is a little thinner so again I would have to do a little bit more blending to get the same effect. And lastly this one has a similar size but the fibers are a lot more flexible and so I don't get the blending effect that I do with this one that just presses it into position. When you'll see me apply it, you'll see that it sort of blends itself as I tap into my cheekbones. So I really enjoyed this brush. It retails for $42 and has been designed to be used with powders as well as emollients. And I just see myself using it for cream contouring. It's beautiful. I also used it to re-intensify my contour after I'd lost some of it after the rest of my makeup application. So it works just as well with a powder. I really like this one. Now we have the highlight brush number 64. This one retails for $32 and the fibers of this brush are meant to be designed to mimic blue squirrel hair which are amongst my favorite um, fibers for brushes. This brush is incredibly incredibly soft. It's labeled the highlighting brush but it can be used for contour, for blush, or for highlighting as you wish. I used it today for setting underneath my eyes. My current favorite brush for that purpose is the Wayne Goss Airbrush which is the softest brush I own and this one feels very very similar. It's very soft in the application. It picks up powder really well, especially loose powders. So setting under the eye is really easy and comfortable using this specific brush. I also used it to apply highlighter and I was able to pick up a highlighter from NARS which is in the Baked Gelee formula and I think that the fact that the brush is a little bit firm in its structure allows me to pick up that kind of formula and I did use it to apply my highlight today. I did like the result. I can also see how it would be good for contouring or blush application and it's one of those brushes that splays out if you apply pressure to it so you can use it to cover larger areas of your face. I checked my collection and this teardrop shape is pretty unique. I have a couple of brushes that are similar. I have the Sonia G Inochige brush which is similar in shape as well as softness. However, this one is natural hair bristles and you can see the teardrop shape is a little bit larger. 
And then I have this synthetic one from Juvia's Place. This one is the J123 Tapered Blush. And this one is a lot more similar in size to the Sonia G than the Scott Barnes brush. Nice, so there you have the three for comparison. I did enjoy the brush for highlighting, but I have to say that this is going to be a favorite for under eye setting. That was my preferred use of it, at least when I tried them out today. I really like how it set my concealer. Next, we have another really unique brush. I think Sephora Collection has mimicked this brush recently, but I don't own it. This is the Sheer Powder brush and the bristles in this case are intended to mimic squirrel hair. Now this brush is intended to be used with traditional loose powders or pressed powders that are not as firmly pressed. I use this brush today to apply my blush and I was able to pick up pressed powder blushes as long as they were not too firmly pressed. I was able to pick it up and I was able to angle the brush in a variety of different ways to sweep the powder across my face in different ways. You could even use this to contour right to do a very light contour because of its shape it kind of chisels right there or even cleaning up underneath if you wish now I did try to pick up some of my NARS big gelée blushes and that's not happening so these fibers are too smooth and too flexible to pick up something that firmly pressed so those big gelée powders they don't come on this brush I tried to pick it up just to see if it would and it definitely doesn't so this is more for a finishing powder for a loose blush for a light dusting of highlights something like that it's a very new shape to me I don't have any comparable to show you so I'm gonna have to practice with this brush a little bit more it does feel amazing on the skin I'm glad to have it in my collection because I definitely don't have anything like this if I can find the Sephora collection similar one I'll put a picture on the screen so you can take a look but this was the number 66 brush and it retails for $42 this is the number 59 lip and eye precision liner and it retails for $18. So this is a brush that I used as an eyeliner so I did use it to tap some of the darker shadow right along my eyelashes as well as underneath my lower lash line. I also used it to put on my eyebrows. I used Anastasia brow powder and it applied my eyebrows very very well. I do have a comparable brush to this one and that is the Zoeva 322 which is called a brow line brush. It's very very densely packed. The fibers are relatively short and firm and it's a very narrow brush. In Tati's video uh, the makeup artist Scott Barnes used this brush in a variety of different ways including lining the lips, contouring the nose, doing the eyebrows. So many different techniques which I'm not prepared to do but I'm definitely happy to experiment with the brush. In the meantime I think it did a great job on my brows and also for eyeliner and stamping right underneath the lower lash line as well as along my upper lash line which is a technique I do really really frequently. Next we have the number 60 brush. This one retails for $21 and it is the eye and lip duality brush. It's supposed to be a dual purpose tool to emphasize your eyes and lips. Maybe this is what he used to line her lips. I'll have to check out the video again. This brush I use to actually lay down the shimmers on my eyelid and it picks up metallic shadows really, really well. I'm using the Tarte Love Trust and Fairy Dust eyeshadow palette and I was able to pick up those metallic shimmer shades really easily with this brush. Although it's a little bit smaller so I had to keep dipping back to get some more product. But it did work well that way. I can also see myself using it to carve out underneath my eyebrow because of its shape. It's got a curve to it so I could see how it would really work with the contours of your mouth as well if you wanted to use it to clean up the lip line or even apply a lip product. Really interesting brush. I have nothing like it. This is the number 60 and it retails for $21. Next we have the eye blender number 62 brush and when I purchased the set I was anticipating having a brush like this in my collection already because I have a lot of blending brushes but this one is very unique in two ways. The first way is that the fibers are really really long and then they come to a tapered point. It's designed to work in your crease and unfortunately I have hooded eyes so I'm not able to really get that crease 
uh, definition that someone with a crease might although I do find that I can use it to blend darker shadows as I work my way down from transitions and it works really really well I have found that the blending brushes that I own that are this long they usually flare out a little bit the most narrow one that I have is the Mac 221 and even that one just expands out a little bit as you go upward in the bristles so this one is definitely unique to my collection it is so soft so super soft on the eyes and it picks up powder really really well whenever I'm working with synthetic brushes that's my main concern that it's not going to be able to pick up the powder but it really does and I think if you have a natural crease you would love this brush the next brush is the eye fan number 61 and it retails for $24 this one is designed for blending concealing and shadowing the eyes I was initially thinking of using it for eyeshadows so it didn't occur to me to use it for my under eye concealer although it's a little bit small for that but actually if I hold it vertically it could definitely work in that way I liked it for contouring my nose I used it much the same way I used the big sister so this number 61 is pretty much a miniature number 65 they have the same structure except for this one is obviously really really small the way that I used it was to create a crease with darker shadows so I stamped the darker shadow on my eye and then I went over it with this to blend it out and it worked really well I could see this really working well with cream eyeshadow if you enjoy cream eyeshadow because again it has those synthetic bristles and it's just really nice brush really interesting I have to work with these eye brushes a little bit more because these shapes are really unique and new to me if you're looking for something similar I believe BH Cosmetics actually released a line of fan brushes and they're synthetic and cruelty free plus a very affordable brand as well I will insert a picture up on the screen so you can check out the brush I think might be most similar to this one but yeah I look forward to using this one to try it as concealer to try it to set my concealer but I liked it for nose contour I liked it for eyeshadow as well lastly we have the number 63 the eye winger brush this one retails for $24 and it's also a miniature of the number 66 brush you can see that this one is just a tiny version of the larger one and this one is supposed to define your eyes for smoky eye looks I was sort of trying it in different shapes to do the outer part of my eye to deepen out the outer V and also to wing out my eye makeup just a little bit this one is supposed to mimic pony hair and I'm not sure that I have any brushes that are made from pony hair I think maybe my Smith cosmetics brushes other than that I can't really think of any but this one again is another unique shape that I have to practice with a little bit what I'm really enjoying about these brushes is that I know I can use them for cream shadows and I'm really interested in trying them out that way this one did do a very good job of winging out my eye makeup as you can see I sort of held it this way and drag the darker color upward and it worked really well it picks up powder really well again which was as I mentioned one of the things I was worried about with the synthetic brushes again I have nothing similar to this in my collection so now that we talked a little bit about all the brushes individually uh, let's talk about the quality of them all together I would say that the quality feels great I didn't experience any shedding with any of the brushes and they really are incredibly soft I was really Really concerned when I first opened it that these brushes were not gonna pick up product because they are so soft and then also maybe not so much this one but one like this the highlighter brush a lot of the bristles are almost shiny it looks like they're almost too slick to pick up powder but that was not the case and that was a happy surprise in terms of the price I did pay $243 for the set you do receive 10 brushes so that takes the price to about $24 with 30 cents for the brushes and some of these larger brushes like this one for example which I found the Marc Jacobs similar brush those retail for like 78 and that was also a synthetic brush so I think overall the brushes are priced fairly given the quality the weight that they have this one is definitely the heaviest of all the brushes but the others they have a very nice weight to them they feel like you have a lot of control the handles are quite long so depending on where you hold the brush you can obtain a different degree of color intensity and payoff as well they're beautifully made beautifully beautifully made if I were to recommend one out of the whole bunch the number 65 brush 
was hands down my absolute favorite. Wow, I was so impressed with this brush. I could see this becoming a part of my daily routine. I highly, highly recommend this one. I also recommend the number 64 brush if you're looking for an alternative to the Sonia G brush. This is a really nice one. Super soft and so pleasant for setting underneath the eyes. Before this brush, I did not have a synthetic version that was this soft to set underneath my eyes. I would have to say that the closest brush would be one of the Kat Von D brushes and it didn't have this shape. So really, really nice brush. I would definitely recommend this one. And even though it's not specific for me, the number 62 brush, this blending brush, if you have a crease, I think you're going to love this. So I have to really, really put an emphasis on this specific brush. Yeah, I think you'll really, really love this. So those three were my favorite from the collection, but they all worked really, really well. I look forward to trying this one out with more powders, maybe some finish powders. I don't know. I have to practice with this one. But all the brushes performed beautifully. They are really high quality, beautifully made, and they look beautiful as well. So overall, very happy with my purchase, and I look forward to experimenting with the brushes a little bit more. That's everything for my video. I hope that this was helpful for you if Tati's video also piqued your curiosity. I actually tried searching online to see if other people had done videos on these brushes, and not many people have, so I think it's great that she's helping out a makeup artists get more exposure for consumers like me because even though I knew he was Jennifer Lopez makeup artist and I think he did Christina Aguilera he did so many famous people I didn't really know he had a brush line so now I do and I actually really enjoyed it and I think that it's great for people who are looking for high quality brushes that are also cruelty free now having experimented with these a little bit my preference is still for natural hair brushes but I do like the versatility that this collection has in that I can use it with my emollients with with my cream products which I do love without really worrying too much about them. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Feel free to check out some of my other videos. I linked some of the other brush reviews videos that I did up in the cards throughout the video. So if you're interested in seeing my thoughts on any other makeup brush collection, then check those out. Otherwise, thank you for joining me today. I hope you had a lovely, lovely day. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I would love to have you and I look forward to seeing you again very, very soon on my next one. Bye-bye.